Hey everyone. Today I'm going to talk about how to have effective sprint retrospectives. Essentially the goal of a retrospective is getting keep getting better as a team. How do we execute better? How do we make things happen with high velocity and high quality? So retrospectives play an extremely important role. In particular, there are three things that as a leader, you need to be focusing on while doing retrospectives. First, how we can do things better in terms of specifically what all activities and tasks, the way the tasks are broken, the way the tasks are divided, so on and so forth. The second aspect is to really get a pulse check on how the team is feeling, whether they are feeling accomplished, they are feeling safe, they are feeling productive, <clears throat> clear, and so on. And the third important aspect of the retrospective is really tracking for patterns of unplanned work. Did things slow down because of unplanned activity coming during the sprint? So let's break this down. Now, when we think of a retrospective, I like to break it down into two dimensions, the what and the how. What is specifically the tasks that were done and how is what happened behind the covers to make those tasks happen, right? And, and we'll sort of break down this further. So when it comes to the what retrospective, this is, a, this is something that most teams do. And the simplest form of the retrospective for what is three questions. What did we do well? What did we not do well? What should we be do doing different next time? So that's the most common model. There are some other models, more fancier models, which is what I have on this slide, right? So there's um, something called a starfish model, where you're essentially asking the same questions, which is keep doing, do more of it, start doing, stop doing, and do less of something. So this is one, one way to get a general sense as to what are the activities that are useful, impactful versus a waste of time. Another model, um, it's called the four L's model, loved, loathed, longed, and learned. This is another very interesting approach um, to, to get a sense as to you know, what the team members, what tasks they loved, what they did not like, what they would have wanted more, they longed for it, and things that they learned. So that's the what retrospective. Now, when it comes to the how retrospective, right? This is not about tasks. This is about aspects that define how tasks get done. And there are a couple of, I would say, interesting um, ways to make this, uh, to do this retrospective, right? Uh, the one I'm showing here is basically referred to as the squad health check. This is coming from uh, folks at Spotify, right? where essentially the way it goes is there are themes, themes along the lines of, you know, learning, delivering value, health of the code base, speed, ease of release, fun, right? And for each of these attributes, you basically define as a thumbs up or a thumbs down, right? So for each of them, you say like, for, for instance, when you think about, um, you know, pawns or players as an example, right? So the, the question there would be, you know, we are in control of our own destiny. That is more of a bottom up approach, right? That's a green. And the red is we're just spawns in a game of chess with no influence over what we build and how we build it. So this is again, getting the sentiments of the team as to what they feel is the right rating. There are other similar models out there. There's something called as the team barometer. Um, again, similar cards model where you write, you know, what good looks like, uh, what the opposite looks like, and you ask the team to vote, right? So you can talk about things like commitment, talk about, you know, um, meeting engagements and, and sort of clearly saying, okay, are we a green or are we a red? So the way this thing works out is once these cards or these questions are selected and you can choose a combination that best suits your team. Essentially what I like to do is really then summarize this as 
where each of the team or the squad is, right? So for you as a leader driving a squad, a specific team, essentially what you're doing is recording what, how the team members in your squad voted for those questions, right? And it's always good to have more of a, you know, track record, a trend analysis. So sort of tracking them over time, that's one aspect. Um, the way to look at this also is, you know, in addition to the color codes, so green and red, there's, you know, a yellow where the answer would be neutral. We are neither reflecting what is listed there as a green nor a red. We are somewhere in between. And an arrow represents are things getting better or getting worse, right? So this way you can get a quick pulse check on, on how things are. And as a leader of a team or multiple teams, this is, this is a way to track how teams are doing and intervention as required. Now, the third part of retrospection is converting unplanned to planned work. So what I mean by that is typically during a sprint, there is unplanned work that the team may get involved with. It could be debugging customer issues, new customer POCs, uh, fixing a production leak. Again, in a startup environment, this is going to be much more common in a much more bigger team with um, many, many uh, well-defined roles. This may not be that significant. But the key here is when an unplanned task comes in, essentially sort of trying to understand is was this one off or is this something that is repeating? In which case we can plan for it. We can factor it in the sprint planning process, right? Like for instance, if it is occurring due to a tech debt, right? The same issue is being hit by 20 customers because of the way the configuration is done, right? And essentially taking that and prioritizing it as a part of the sprint, let's just do it right, right? So that would be an example of taking these uh, unplanned activities, doing it and fixing the problem or the fixing the feature so that doesn't really show up, right? Um, the other thing also could be that, you know, it could be an enhancement, something which everyone runs into, which is again coming one off, better to just plan it and make it happen. If it is truly a white space, like you know, some kind of a flow or process, the way we are, let's say debugging security issues may not have been defined. So again, taking that, putting a process around it. Really the key point here is how do you make sure that unplanned tasks can be converted into the thinking process upfront for the next sprint around. So takeaways from um, this lesson, three of them. First, the what retrospective, again, really making sure that you know, the team is aligned in terms of uh, the tasks the team is working on. There are various different models we talked about there, Starfish, 4Ls, or plain simple, what worked, what didn't. The how retrospective, many times uh, this is missed. In fact, uh, early in my career, career, that's something that I used to miss as well. So this is something which is extremely valuable. You don't have to do it every sprint. You can maybe take, pick a, you know, um, a quarterly cadence or twice a quarter cadence, but really sort of looking at you know, the honest ratings of the team um, on different topics and tracking it over time. Uh, I think the trend here is more important rather than a specific point, point in time. And lastly, really using um, the opportunity to look at what are the unplanned tasks that slowed us down during the sprint? What came in the way to get to 100% completion of the planned activity? And can that be converted from a one-off into something more structured and streamlined? So to wrap up, um, I always like to end with an assignment. So here's the assignment for you. For your recent sprint, you know, definitely perform the retrospective, both the what and the how with the team. And I would be curious in terms of what did you learn that, that surprised you? Hope you found this useful. Thanks everyone.